Hello everyone and welcome back to the great Ace Attorney Adventures. Last time we discovered that the Gairdebs have an open case window, so anything that it, uh, they could have thrown, you know, would have fallen straight down to the ground rather than across the street. Now what they, uh, the couple on the witness stand right here just revealed, you know, at the very end of the last one, is that Rolly's beat actually, you know, that is like the very edge of his beat, you know, like it, it's divided right down the middle of the street. You know, between where the crime scene happened and where the Gerdev's house is. So I believe what we're going to have to do, right, is prove that the crime may have actually occurred on that side of the street where the beat is. And they somehow moved the crime scene over. That is what my guess is, anyway. Now, what I didn't realize in between episodes is that I actually uh, forgot to actually press this first statement here. I think I, I kind of just shrugged it off. But in between episodes here, I realized I don't really have a whole lot to go off of, you know. There's nothing really sticking out to me. So I have a feeling this is probably going to be another case of press everything. So let's go ahead and press this uh, first statement. I just forgot to do last time. How can you say uh, that for certain? A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. It has the noble founding principles of the Force written on it as a reminder to us, uh, to all of us policemen of our sworn duty. He showed us that before, didn't he? Did he? I can't say I remember. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace of the common man. It's what the job's all about. And that is why I can stand here today beside my long-suffering wife and tell you a Bobby's good for his word. While rubbing my tired eyes admittedly. Sah! Oh, really? You're so manly. Of course I am, my darling Patricia. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. No, none of this is what I meant. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Gerdeb? Yeah, we're getting a bit off topic here. Ah, I see, Saw. You should have said so earlier, Saw. Yes, well, so c could you answer the question? That was a waste of time, then. That was a tremendous waste of time. Absolutely, Saw. I will answer to the fullest of my ability, Saw. This is a surprising reason why Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb's domestic dispute can't be related to this case. But before I get into that, sir, just one thing. Oh, the music just cut out. Spooky. Y yes? I'd very much like you and all your countrymen to understand the Great British Institution of Scotland Yard. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London Bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. So to that end, sir, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your perusal. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through it without shedding a few tears. Thank you, I'll try. That's very moving. Okay, so I'm actually glad we got a bit of evidence here. A small folding wall that identifies London Bobbies contains the rules of conduct to which they must adhere. Okay, well, we gotta examine that. Oh, what's going on here? Um, can I ask you something? Please, Mr. Lawyer, sir. I was gonna go and present this and, like, maybe examine it. like Or examine it and then present it on the statement. But I guess the game is gonna move on. Uh, here. Oh! Um, yes, of course. What is it? You're... You're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell! No, what? I, I wasn't really... I mean... What's she doing? Please... Just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. I did not say anything of the sort. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word, I am. I... I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses. I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard. My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? Yes, Mrs. B. I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. Sometimes the path of least resistance is the sage one. That was a very loud mutter. I heard that. Did, 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 I'm sorry, did I think out loud again? That that Japanese man thinks a policeman's wife's, wife's word counts for nothing, does he? No! Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my really won't. Duly noted, Mrs. B. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? 
Oh, there's a new statement here. I, wait, wait a second. What? Is this new? Yeah, this was this was the this was the fourth state. No, wait. Yeah, this was the fourth statement last time. Oh, dang! I didn't want to go over. Dang it. Okay, I think that yeah they okay. So this new statement is fifth in line, I think. Skip, 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 skip. Okay, what is this? Uh, I know what I saw. My eyes never let me down. My sense of direction is a little off sometimes, though. Sure, let's press that. Uh, Mrs. B, nobody is questioning what you've told us. I saw it, I did, that evening. I saw it clearly. That little Easter man with the whiskers and the funny curved back, slinking away from the scene. Ha. Ah. And I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying through the sky. All very clear. You... You also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh, yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I'm always ending up at the wrong place when I made arrangements to meet Rolly. He gets ever so... Cross. Cross, you say? Hmm. Maybe I should pursue that. What is this guy? Something's going on here with him. This is kind of a weird animation. I guess we'll pursue that. I don't see ever, I don't see ever see a reason why you wouldn't pursue, honestly. Constable B, is there a problem? Eh? Uh, 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 no, sir. Uh, no problem, sir. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir, it, yes, sir. I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening, is all. What? You mean Mrs. Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box in the next beat over from mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer than what I was expecting. I thought she'd be back inside 10 minutes, but my darling was a gone a good 15. Come on, man, that's like a 5 minute difference. Like, that's like nothing. Oh, Rolly, you're such a tease. But the reason I was so long was because of the bouquet, silly. The bouquet? Uh, sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Rolly's so romantic. He saved up for it with... Uh, farthings and hapanis he found in the gutter while doing his rounds. Garbage money? Yes, how romantic. I've forgotten all about it until just now. How do you, my darling? Ah! Mm, ah, oh yes. But that was just between us. Oh. No talking about it to anyone else, darling. You have to promise. Really? Oh. What was that all about? Constable Beat looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insight, Mr. Naruhoto. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mrs. Beat about the bouquet. Mrs. Beat, this bouquet you just mentioned. I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. He's like, what the heck are they talking about? What happened was, I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my way for a while. Okay, let's press this. We're adding lots of statements to this testimony now. You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. Oh, I was so upset. When we ran over and saw it was a woman with a knife in her back. I was so shocked, I dropped the bouquet Rolly gave me. So where is it in the photo? It was in a dark spot where the street lights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. Ooh, that sounds like it's going to be important. And then you went to the police box to report it to the policeman whose beat it was on? Yes, and I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see. That's when I spied my bouquet again. But the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. Because you need reminding, Mrs. B. 
The victim is not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right. Silly me, I got over to the wrong side of the street. Although, I'm gonna blame the bouquet this time. I can't think how it got there. I really can't. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite. No, it was the body that moved. Hmm, curious indeed. Isn't it? But the worst of it is, I forgot to pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. Oh, that's so evidence. So, so evidence. What am I talking about? That is very strong evidence. Uh, that beautiful rose really uh, bought me with that change from the gutter he spent so long collecting. By bouquet. Do you perhaps mean... I mean... Uh, do you perhaps mean this sorry, solitary rose? Oh! Oh! Yes, yes, that's it! That's bouquet really bought for me for our anniversary! With old bits of change he found in the gutter. It's not really a bouquet so much as it is a single flower. Uh, uh maybe just call it a rose. Tell us, Lord Vazix, where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation. It was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Gerdeb household. Oh. Wasn't that just damning evidence for us then? In front of the Gerdeb's house. Although uh, it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamp cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I Can I have it back now, please? No, it's evidence! I need it! Hmm. No, I think for good measure, this rose should be added to the court record as evidence. Oh. Present for Patricia B. from her husband, Rolly. The shock of seeing the stab victim caused Mrs. B. to drop the rose where she stood. But it's a symbol of our love. I want it back after the trial. Do you hear me? I want it back. Good grief! Rest assured that I shall do my very best to not forget, Mrs. B. Okay. Okay, now we definitely gotta go presenting something here. Hang on. I really want to read this book. Uh, Principles of Policing. Item 1. A policeman will strive to preserve the peace within his allotted beat. Uh, item 2. A patrolling officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the furtherance of community relations. Uh, Metropolitan Police Regulations. Item 1. Any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. Item 2. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigation to help detectives. Right then. Oh, I didn't want- oh, dang it. I didn't want to advance through this. Um. Oh, oh, this sounds like new dialogue, actually. Uh, the fourth book that had no business being at the scene of the crime made me sure that Mrs. Garrett was hiding something there, but it's becoming increasingly clear that someone else was, has been hiding something from us as well. I think I may already be armed with everything I need to strike a decisive blow here. This time, it's going to expose the whole truth about this mysterious affair. So yeah, the game's basically telling me, yeah, you gotta present, you know? Hmm, what statement would it be, though? I don't know what statement I want to present this on. It's definitely probably the bouquet. I don't know what statement. Maybe it's the first one. Yeah, I think it's probably the first one here. Let's try that. I was wrong. Okay. Let's just consider the implications of that statement for a moment, shall we? What implications, counsel? Nothing strikes me about it. Uh, um, exactly. There's nothing striking about it. Mm, what does strike me is your propensity for the inane, however. Ugh. 
Dang it. Okay. Well, that wasn't it. Uh, hmm. I don't think that makes sense. I don't know, dudes. Maybe it's this one. Let's try it out. Okay, that was right. Might be one of those cases where there's several statements that are correct. That's my guess, anyway. You claim, Constable B, that there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene. But that cannot be. Uh, what do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Mrs. B, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime, what the policeman assigned to the beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection. He's probably going to say the wind blew it. Yes, on the opposite side of the Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. I honestly would think it's more likely that the wind blew it, but I could see where this argument is going. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry blue could be so described, no doubt it was blown in the wind across the street, back into the gutter where it belongs. Oh, that is harsh, my man. Meager? Objection! Objection, your honor, that was totally rude and uncalled for. But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. Constable B swore to that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the bouquet belonged to me. It has nothing to do with the case. That's that's what really that's why Rolly didn't mention it. I'm sure. No, because sadly, it's not only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Think about it. Besides Mrs. Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Gerdeb's book. Mr. Gerdeb's copy of the Lion's Pride, which was thrown out the window by his wife, would have struck the pane of the casement window and landed here on the west side of the street. And yet... How'd it get over there? It was actually found here on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hand. Mean meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Mrs. Beat's bouquet should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime on the east side of the street. But in fact, it was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in front of Mr. and Mrs. Gerdeb's house. There's no logical explanation for the those things, unless somebody deliberately moved them. What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my Rolly's done something wrong. Don't you listen to a word that scrawny lawyer says. Wittering on about books and bouquets, why should we care? It's nitpicking, that's what it is. Oh good, Mrs. Gerdeb's come around. You might call it nitpicking, Mrs. Gerdeb. But deliberately meddling with the scene of the crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Tampering, Mr. Naruhoto. Oh! What was that? Three or four exc exclamation points. I mean, the record's still six, right? But, um... I don't think we're ever gonna break that record anytime soon. But the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it. For a very subtle but compelling reason. For a very su subtle but compelling reason. Objection. Tampering? You've barely heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend, who would, would possibly have had uh, cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. Counsel, I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? Um, it's probably a Rolly. Because he didn't want to do his job, I think. Take that. Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Be 
Big points! Constable Roy Beats, it was you. What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense? Why would my Rolly do something like that? There's no no one straighter than my husband. No Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London. Mrs. Beat, you said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up. It's all nonsense. It's all lies. What about the Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him. He did it. Protection. No, but you saw him run away. That was true. Cosmo Beat would have seen him do it. Oh. And forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mrs. Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Ugh. Well, well. Objection. First you make accusations about the landlord and his wife. And now you incriminate a policeman as well. Well, your accusations lack one very important thing. You claim the crime scene was tampered with. But there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right. He's right. But my husband and I just happened to be there, that's all. So why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Constable B had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this key to this entire affair. Mr. Naruhoto, have you have you managed to solve this mystery? Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevocably damaged. With that stark warning in mind, will you now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering? Yes, my lord. He was too lazy and he didn't want to do his job. Constable Beat's motive for tampering with the crime scene was to hide... Uh, where the victim fell. Bang. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Briar Road. We saw it happen, remember? It was right here, as if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly what everybody has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? What? I'm beginning to wonder where this uh, tumult- I have never seen that word before in my life. Uh, where this tumultuous trial will end, counsel. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know, my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? I'll tell you where I think, man. I think it was right here. Take that. Uh, but, but that's on the opposite side of the road. I don't understand. On the evening in question, Mr. Garadab's book fell directly down from the open window above. And your bouquet, Mrs. B, never moved at all. What did move his big point was the scene of the crime itself. Oh, good, good gracious. Objection. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment of the uh, the attack took place. Th that, that's right, I saw it with my own eyes. It was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was the typical London fog on the ground. When he saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid. That was actually on the west side of Briar Road. Uh, no, that's not true. It can't have been. Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. Dude, how is he like just standing there and letting us besmirch him right now? 
and during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in this print. The victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement to the east side of Briar Road. Extraordinary! But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? Oh, he's he looks he's looking down in like shame now. The bouquet, I presume. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the ro rose bouquet. Lord Van Veek said it wasn't noticed until the morning, as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. Yes, it couldn't have been seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Rolly beats. Um, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Yeah, we just accused you of tampering, my man. Oh, Roly. It isn't true, is it? What the lawyer said is all lies, is it? He just said he didn't hear anything. Come on now. I know it is, because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know. I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything come out. Everything exposed. Only, it seems, it wasn't a dream at all. Good. Good golly! Order! 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 What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh, Rolly, why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse is, is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? She's not dead! Wishing the victim dead should be one, too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. I... I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. For damaging the Yard's reputation. For... For everything. I have a possible explanation. For why, on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the, the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. And yet, Lord Vazix, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary uh, young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England. Japan. Makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. What gives away the motive for the constable beats? Unthinkable actions. Uh, it's probably gonna be his book. Take that! Take that! I realize I'm a foreigner in this land, and I have only just arrived from Japan. Which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies is completely new to me. I've learnt that. Though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat, in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh, yes! It was our very first wedding anniversary. 
Constable B had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife. I was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Mrs. B stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. When he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them. What must have gone through the man's mind? But sir, so, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. B puts up with a lot being married to a Bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. This is the warrant card that Constable B offered to lend me to me earlier. Inside, among the rules for, for a patrolling policeman, it says, When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Oh! Constable B. Is that, or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said. It's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on the Constable Beats Beats. Good gracious! Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you have done? I'm sure he has. That's why he did it. It was the first time since I became, became a copper that I had ever cursed God. Wow, that got dark. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal could be st could still be lurking somewhere. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were. Or the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Why here? Why did this have to happen here? Why tonight of all nights? Why? I'm waiting for him to transform at this point. It's Copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so... I told Pat that she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then, when I opened my mouth to speak. It just... came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth! This is the next beat to mine, uh, Pat. So you'll have to go to the police box that covers it. Turn right along Meerschaum Street, and then... Okay, I guess the rest of the directions don't matter. My dude, can't you just request some time off? Oh my gosh, now he's crying! I'm... I'm... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, Constable. I, I just wanted... Just that one night to take my Patricia's out, Patricia out for dinner. Oh, Rolly. Just that one night. You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street, to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring Beats care. I don't understand how Patricia had never noticed that. You see, I, I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon? Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rolly would never have left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. Oh, I see your meaning now. But God got me back for my sins, didn't he? That's why... That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. 
Oh no, Rolly, that was all my fault. I should never have dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Rolly. And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from one side of the road to the other in total? Huh? Oh, um... Four it was. Yes, saw uh, Definitely four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume, and the fourth. Being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garadab household, of course. But... What made you place that book in the victim's hand? It probably was already in her hand, if I had to guess. When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, so... Uh, that's because that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You're sure it was this book, the Lion's Pride, that was the victim was holding? Oh yes, yeah, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Interesting. Updated. I thought it was an open and shut uh, case at the time, you see. There were only two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However, which way you looked at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it, I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I didn't think moving it all over the road would make a jot of a difference. I... I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Vadzix. I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. Constable, you may withdraw. Go get a nap, my man. Yes, sir. Uh... Um, Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What will become of my Rolly? What will happen to him? He's getting fired. <laughs> For now, you're free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please, don't punish my husband. This was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. All right then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Uh, carve that lesson in your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Ah, uh, never again, sir. Uh, you mean to say... Yes, no more criming from now on. Leave now. This trial is not yet over. Ah. Uh, um, so all right, guys. Yeah, so we're definitely way over on time here. Uh, about almost nine minutes now. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna leave the episode here. I assume we're gonna call some more witnesses. Probably uh, the Garadevs, if I had to guess. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Next time, uh. I, mean, I guess we'll just have to see, right? That's what I'm just assuming. So yeah, I hope you guys have a good day, and I will talk to y'all later. Have a good day, guys. Bye!